What is up guys, my name is Fran and welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, I'm gonna tell you guys why the Elgato Wave 3 is the best microphone for video conferencing, live streamers, and content creators alike. But before we begin, as I just mentioned a moment ago, my name is Fran and here on the channel, I make videos all about technology. So if you like gadgets, like new microphones and other emerging technologies, and you like what you see here today in this video, consider hitting that subscribe button down below. All right, so let me start off by saying this. The Elgato Wave 3 is not your typical microphone. No, it's much, much more. This thing is an entire sound engine, allowing you to control and manipulate the audio that comes into your computer and that goes out to your live stream. And it does all of this while staying in a relatively small form factor, such as the microphone you see right here in front of me. Now, because of the complexity of this device, I plan on kind of breaking this video up just a tad bit. At the beginning, we'll just go over more of the more common things that you'd see in a typical microphone review, and then we'll deep dive into the software and I'll show you some of its advanced features. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the video. Let's kick things off by taking a look at the construction quality of the Elgato Wave 3. So as you can see, the body is primarily made up of mostly plastics. And if you're really pixel peeping, it has lots of imperfections, especially along the edges. But despite all these flaws, it doesn't come off cheap. But I'll chalk that up to Elgato's brand recognition. Turning our attention over to the physical attributes of the Wave 3, along the front you'll find a single control wheel slash button. This allows you to adjust the input volume of the microphone, the output volume of the headphones, and then the mixture between the two. Along the top of the microphone, you'll find a single mute button, which allows you to mute and unmute the microphone. And along the back, you'll find a USB-C port as well as a headphone port. The Wave 3 does come pre-installed with a tabletop microphone stand, which does get the job done. However, I found the microphone to be much more effective if you use it with a modified microphone stand, such as a boom arm. Elgato also has made a number of additional accessories available for the Wave 3, a pop filter, a shock mount, and extension rails. And while I believe everyone has their own taste when it comes to product design, I personally find the design of the Elgato Wave 3 to be pretty cool. I mean, it's very subtle and it's just a basic rectangle, but I think it fits most people's aesthetics. So if aesthetics are your thing, considering this thing needs to be plugged in at all times once you integrate it into your sound system, I think it'll pretty much match any setup. And now let's talk sound quality and sound profile. You might want to put on headphones for this part of the video. So the Elgato Wave 3 features a multi-layered noise shield, a premium condenser capsule that has a cardioid polar pattern. Now this is just me reading marketing material off of Elgato's website, but what we really want to know about is real world tests. Well, for the entirety of this video thus far, I've been using the Elgato Wave 3 to record all of my voiceover. But how does it actually stand when you compare it to other popular microphones, such as the Shure SM7B and the Sennheiser MKH416? So the first microphone up for comparison is this guy right here. This is the Shure SM7B. Now this is definitely the more popular microphone of the bunch. You've probably seen it on YouTubers and podcasters and broadcasters. And pretty much everyone all over the world uses the Shure SM7B. It just has a legendary sound. But this is just me using the Shure SM7B so you guys can hear the audio difference between this and the Sennheiser MKH416. Now this microphone is considerably more expensive than all three of these microphones. In fact, you could probably buy two of these and maybe four or five of these with the same cost of the MKH416. But I did want to do this just so you guys can hear a difference in the sound quality between all of these very popular microphones that you've probably seen for content creation all over the internet. Now we are back on the Elgato Wave 3. So three separate microphones, three separate sound profiles, all unique within their own regards, but considering what else the Elgato Wave 3 can do, I think it definitely holds its own against the other two professional sound options. And now let's have a look at some of those advanced software features that I was referring to earlier on in this video. Now, in order to take full advantage of the Elgato Wave 3, you're gonna need the companion Wavelink software. Now, in order to download that, you can simply navigate to Elgato's download page and select your product from the drop-down list. And then from there, you can select your operating system. And as you guys can tell, it is compatible with both Mac OS and Windows 10. And if you couldn't tell by now for this tutorial, I'll be using Windows 10. Now, once you have the Wavelink software installed and running, you'll see two different sections, one labeled inputs and one labeled outputs. Let's start with the inputs. So along the top here, you'll notice a number of different categories, and we'll get to those in just a moment, but the first one we'll start on is the category all the way to the left, which is our controls for our Wave 3 microphone. 
Now, if you hit this drop down in up our settings, you see a number of different categories. The first one allows you to rename the microphone if you're not a fan of the Wave 3 name. The next one is just a graphical representation of the input levels. And right below that, we have three different controls, one for gain, one for output volume, and one for microphone slash PC mix. These are actually the same exact controls that we have a physical button for on the very front of the Ogata Wave 3. Now, right below that, we have the ability to enable and disable our advanced low cut filter. And then right below that, we can enable and disable our clip guard. And right below that, we have our firmware version for the Ogata Wave 3. Heading back over to the main window of the Wavelink software, you'll also notice two different volume bars, one for your monitor mix and one for your stream mix. So what you can actually do with these two bars is actually adjust them individually. I'm gonna use a music one for an example since I'm recording with the actual wave one. But if I wanted to just adjust the volume for a monitor mix, I can do that individually while I adjust the one just for my stream mix, just like that. But if I wanted to link them together, there is also this button here that allows me to adjust both of them at the exact same time. So not sure when that scenario would actually come up, but you do have the ability to adjust them individually and together. Now moving on to the other category options, this is where things get pretty interesting. This is really where you can start to manipulate the audio that comes into your computer and that goes out over your live stream. So say for example, let's start with our voice chat. So once you actually click this drop down menu here, you'll notice a couple of really cool things. At the top, we have a couple of categories like system, voice chat, and SFX. And at the bottom, we have a couple of other items like our Audio ID4, the Elgato Sound Capture, and our C922 Pro Stream. Now what these are actually at the bottom are physical audio inputs. So let's say for example, I had another USB microphone connected to this, or I had just a, another microphone like our Audio ID4, which controls our Shure SM7B. I can actually have more than one USB microphone connected to a computer. Computer, which is very cool because historically, once you have one USB microphone connected to your computer, that's the only one you can use. But leveraging the Wavelink software, you can actually have two or possibly even more. The other thing you can actually do with the ones at the top, which is even cooler, is you can assign individual applications to this particular line. So let me show you how that works. So let's say I wanted to, for example, send all of my Discord audio chat over my live stream. I can do that one of two ways. I can simply open up the Discord application. I'm gonna click on it now and type in Discord. And once I have the application open, I can simply go over to the options. I'm gonna to go to my voice and audio options and I can select my output device and actually set that to be my Elgato Wave. So I'm gonna find the voice chat. And just like that, you guys probably actually heard it in the recording, but I am now sending all of my audio that comes out of Discord over to my live stream or to my monitor mix, whatever I choose. Now, another way to do this is also to go through the Windows sound settings. So I'm gonna click on this icon right up here in the software, and this is gonna open up the universal sound settings for Windows. Now, as you can see here, I can individually select any one of these applications to send audio out to whatever a wavelength output I want to. So as you see, I hit this drop down here and there's a number of different options. And once again, I can go to Discord and hit Wavelink Voice, and then I'll be able to actually send the audio out to the Wavelink. Another way this could be leveraged is if you wanna send music over your live stream, like say for example, I wanted to send all of my browser audio over to the Elgato Wavelink software, I can simply just do that and then I could go to a royalty free website, and hit play, and you guys probably can hear it in the extra recording, hopefully the volume's low enough, but you can probably hear music that's coming off of my browser and I can control the volume and bring it all the way down to nothing if I wanted to and probably still be working perfectly fine. And there's not too much complexity when it comes to the outputs, but I'll go over it really quickly. So as you guys can see here in the output section, there's two different options. One's gonna be our monitor mix and one is gonna be our stream mix. So in our monitor mix, if I hit this drop down here, I have a couple of options. I'm currently using my Audio ID4, which is my main speakers hooked up to my monitors. Uh, but if I wanted to, I could switch over to the headphone jack on the Elgato Wave 3, and I could simply live monitor all the audio that's going out to my stream or that's going out to my computer and listen to it through that. Uh, to the right of that, I have a, a representation. If I didn't have it on mute, uh, you'd actually probably see the levels of anything that might be going out to the monitor mix. And to the right of that, I can manually adjust the volume of this particular output if I wanted to. To, and to the right of that is an actual mute button. And I'm not, not messing with this again because I'm recording with it right now, but this is where I'd unmute it if I wanted to have the audio loop back and I could actually hear it. Now right to the bottom of that is our main stream mix. This is where everything that's going out to a stream is going. Uh, there's not too many options here. It just simply tells you to select the stream option as your input device using output. So output device to input device, and that's how it sends everything over the stream mix. But this is how you control that. As you can see, there's a graphical representation of the audio levels that will be going out to my stream mix. And then finally, another volume button, and then the ability to mute all that audio. And that's it. That's the Wavelink software. I think it's really awesome. It gives you a ton of control. And this is a really, really awesome way 
to manipulate the audio that comes into your computer and that goes out of your live stream. And it's definitely comparable to, as many other reviewers have said, very comparable to the Go XLR. So that is the Elgato Wave 3 and its companion Wavelink software. A microphone that I consider to be one of the best tools for video conferencing, live streamers, and content creators alike. The sound quality is awesome, the design is really pleasing, and the price tag is, well, we actually haven't gone over the price tag. So the retail price for the Elgato Wave 3 is actually $159.99, extremely competitive considering all that it can do. Now it also has a younger brother, the Elgato Wave 1, and while I don't own one, from what I can tell from the research I've done, it pretty much is the same microphone, except it doesn't have the scroll wheel slash button on the front. And it comes in at a retail price of $129.99. So if you're looking to save a couple of bucks, it's a great alternative. But regardless of which one of these two microphones you choose, either one is great for online media content creation. I even find myself reaching for my Elgato Wave 3 as opposed to my Shure SM7B when I go online and do video conferences. So I guess you consider this to be my new main microphone. And if all that wasn't clear enough, I highly recommend the Elgato Wave lineup of microphones. And that is going to wrap this video up. As always, if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. Also, while you guys are down there, if you like this video, hit the like button. And if it's your first time to the channel, consider subscribing. Once again, guys, my name is Fran. Thanks for checking out this video, and I'll see you guys in my next one.